Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and today we're going to cover the sales last night over at Heritage in their premier December auction. There were some incredible items in this auction, lots of pre-production, another hand-painted rocket-firing Boba Fett. I think that the the buzzword or the, the theme of this was pullback. There was a lot of pulling back on prices, and I've got some thoughts as to why that may be. I could be completely wrong on this, but there there were a lot of really amazing items that sold for well below where I expected the price to be, uh, especially the Tri-Logo General Maydeen, which was an AFA 85, the highest graded example. We're going to compare that to the Hakes example that sold earlier this year. And it's crazy. And the Rocket Firing Fett, obviously, was another one where we saw a massive pullback on prices. So, does that mean that the market's collapsing? Does it mean that we should all just sell everything? No. I mean, I, I think that there's just a lot of factors going on right now as it relates to the collectible market. And I would love to know what your y'all's thoughts are. Please do leave me a like if you enjoyed this video, but, but leave a comment as well. Especially if you cover this market regularly. I don't, okay? The pre-production market is a little outside of my level of expertise. So just take my comments for what you will. Uh, there were a lot of interesting comments in the Facebook 12-back group from a lot of the older time collectors, a lot of the big name collectors. And as we kind of go through, through this, I'll just share with you what they had to say as well. But some, some beautiful items that sold. So the first one we've got is a engineering pilot with prototype double telescoping lightsaber for Luke Farmboy. So this is an early, early pre-production with a pre-production prototype double telescoping saber. Graded AFA 60, obviously, with the yellowing. But, you know, this was an early prototype. Figure and saber verified to have originated together from the same Kenner employee. Feet have A19. Uh, Saber is a translucent pre-production. So very cool item. It sold at $47.50, which, you know, part of it was because of the grade. You know, it's it's a yellowed figure, but I actually think that price is pretty good. That, that's a that's a pretty nice price for what it is. I've got an unmarked pre-production Luke Farm Boy Farm Boy DT. That my double telescoping saber is not pre-production. This one clearly is uh, a, a translucent plastic, very early production kind of figure. Uh, so this one should go for a lot more than what I paid for mine. I can't remember what I paid for mine. Mine's an AFA 80. And again, it's unmarked EP. It was found with a bunch of other EPs. So it's not the same. Okay, I'm not trying to say mine's the same, but mine's an AFA 80 unmarked. So you can't really call it a pre-production, but it was found with other marked engineering pilots. And I think I paid $1,500 for my AFA 80 DT Luke. So I, I think I'm pretty comfortable with that price point given what this one went for. Uh, but it's not, you know, you can't call mine an engineering pilot, right? It's, it's, it's just found with it. And all of that is noted in this certificate of authenticity. I think it's worth more than a standard double telescoping saber Luke. But, uh, you know, this, this kind of thing is, is, a true grail, and I, I think it was worth every penny of that price. Likewise, here was a pre-production cape version of Princess Leia, another first shot action figure. So first shot action figure, Princess Leia, pre-production, and the cape was not the final cape used. AFA 50 on that one, and uh, you know, just a, another early, early example of Princess Leia. You can kind of see the the face on this one. Uh, was, I don't know if it's, it was hand painted or if it was just kind of a, a, an early test, but very clearly a, a pre-production example. And it sold for big money, ninety three seventy five. All of these prices include the buyer's premium from Heritage, but uh, a very cool item. And I, I don't have a reference point on that one. Uh, that, that to me feels like it's probably in the realm of fair market value, uh, just given what it is. But uh, you're not talking to somebody that, that knows the, that market very well. This was an, a really interesting item. There was no hanger tab punch on this. And it was kind of noted as the earliest pre-production, earliest carded sample known to exist for the Death Squad Commander. So 
it's a it's a very uh, early example. No punch on the card and dark blue uh, figure stand. And so you can see there, it's got a, a different figure stand than the final production sample. So this is a, a very rare item, AFA sixty, and you can see on the on the CIB statement of our of authenticity here it says darker blue stand likely cut from an r2d2 stand this no punch version is believed to be the earliest known carded sample of this figure i mean how cool is that and it sold for twenty thousand dollars which you would fully expect i mean you basically have a piece of history in your hand for this this is the first and earliest according to afa i mean they obviously don't know for a fact but this is the earliest known example of a carded death squad commander how cool is that i can only imagine what this would be worth for princess leia or or luke or darth vader but uh twenty thousand dollars uh for you know a piece of collecting history there that's really really cool uh, next up was a 12-back proof card for the Tuscan Raider, airbrushed non-LP mock-up. So all of this was kind of mocked up as they were transitioning away from the LP logo on the 12-back Ace, and and so they kind of airbrushed airbrushed out the LP logo. Obviously, yeah, that's true for all of the early Kenner stuff, right? They had the LP logo and then they moved away from it. So this was a sample where they were kind of testing out the airbrushing quality to see how well uh, they got rid of it and it sold for eighteen thousand seven fifty. so very very cool there another piece of collecting history on that one all right on to the big boy and you know i, I would be curious for, for those of you that know this market I'm, I, I know that a few of you guys watch this watch my channel i don't know why uh, but a few of you guys watch my channel that that actually buy and collect this stuff and this was another L-slot hand-painted Boba Fett, rocket firing, obviously, AFA-80. And uh, you can see their alternate paint scheme hand-painted L-slot, AFA-80. It sold for $275,000, all right? But you got to remember that there was another example of this exact same kind of thing that sold uh, in the standard paint scheme. This one was an alternate paint scheme, alternate paint scheme. So I would argue that this is probably a better item, right? Versus the AFA 60 that sold on Heritage in May for $525,000. So so this one has the L slot is molded in blue and painted gray to illustrate the plastic color to be used in the final J slot version. It's, an L, it's another L slot, but it's a lower grade and it sold for $525,000 back in May. And then we have this one that has an alternate paint scheme uh it's it, of only a handful that exists only two are known in this paint scheme so again in my opinion this two hundred and seventy five thousand dollar number it has to be eye-opening right uh to, to me that's a, a huge drop for what it is and it's higher grade and one of two examples so i i have to believe that whoever owned this example has to be disappointed or whoever did own it and submitted it to heritage has to be disappointed with this final price i think if i'm the buyer of this i've, I've got to be really happy with this final price point so there's a, there's been a pullback on the collectibles market uh, at the high at the upper end and i'd be curious to know what you guys think as to why i i got a completely off the wall idea about this all right and so take this for what you will we are entering a new administration that is very pro deregulation and very pro crypto all right starting next year the new sec chairman paul atkins that's going to be taking over he's a crypto bull a cryptocurrency bull crypto market bull the old sec chairman gary what's his name gensler or whatever his name is he was very much not a crypto bull. He, he, I don't think he knew anything about crypto based on, based on some of his activity as an SEC chairman. So I personally think that a lot of people that have big boy money have really dove all in to the crypto market, Bitcoin and whatever else. Obviously, we've seen a massive run up in Bitcoin uh, since the election and even continuing into today. As of the making of this video, Bitcoin crossed over the hundred thousand dollar per bitcoin threshold for the very first time and a lot of people are speculating that bitcoin is going to double over the next year 
Again, who knows what happens, right? Don't take this as financial advice. But I personally think that a lot of the people that are uh, into these kinds of items are also into other speculative investments like Bitcoin, and they have pushed their chips all in on the table. I know people that have done that, all right? So like very high net worth individuals worth a hundred. Two hundred million dollars that have pushed all their chips in on the table um, into crypto, and I, I think that that per, I personally think that's what's going on is that they are taking their resources and putting it into other highly speculative, very risky asset classes like cryptocurrency, be, just because the the new administration that's coming in, like him or hate him, I they're they're up they're very pro crypto. And the deregulation aspect is going to play a, a, a significant role in cryptocurrency securities next year. So that's my personal theory. Let me know if you think I'm crazy on that. But uh, looking at what the crypto market has done just since the beginning of November, even into today, where Bitcoin has moved well past 100000 per Bitcoin for the very first time, I personally think that's what's going on. So... Uh, it just seems like when you've got you know these kind of high risk big time assets that 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 could be playing a factor i also wanted to show you this golden auctions example that was the you know it's the very it's one of the the few known fully complete mail away rocket firing fets that obviously sold for big money it was an afa 85 plus it included the the mailer box, the baggie, two Kenner cards, two rockets, two rocket firing rockets. So this is what it was going to look like if it had actually made it to collector's hands with the rocket firing mechanism. Obviously, we all know the history that it was scrapped for a welded rocket, but this is one of only a few examples and it sold, uh, let's see, back on August 17th for $1.342 million. So I'm not saying that this that that this is comparable to these. To me, I would rather have one of these than I would rather one of these. Now I'm not you know this is an amazing item. Don't get me wrong, but but to get a hand painted L slot for you know let's call that uh, two you know two seventy five versus one point three. I mean that's that's a twenty five percent you know twenty five percent of the value of of what this one went for. So. I think this is going to go down as a massive win for whoever bought this. I, I really do think that this is going to be a lot of money uh, down the line. I, I think that you know once maybe the crypto market settles out, the next time we have a big settling in crypto where you know we have a, a pullback, uh, ten years down the line, this this kind of item is going to probably go for more like what this one went for of five hundred twenty five thousand. So I think this was a great buy. Whoever got it. And uh, it's it's going to do very well long term. All right, I've, I've been I've spent too much time on that. We're going to pop through a lot of these. This is an AFA ninety five bell display. AFA ninety five population two, so one of two in a ninety five grade. I mean, how beautiful is this? Fifteen thousand dollars on that one. I mean, th this auction really included some incredible items. This was a special offer. Three pack special action figure set AFA seventy five, but with the special offer on the top right, that sold for forty five hundred dollars, um, and so that you know that's probably in line with market. I, there's obviously a number of these that CIB has for sale on eBay right now. Um, I, I should have probably compared that to to what this one's listed at or what this one sold for versus what where those are listed, but I did not do that. I forgot to do that, but that was an incredible item. Uh, AFA 90 population 10 for this 21 figure store display. So again, another retail store display. These are huge items, right? AFA 90, that one sold for $3,500 versus this one that was an AFA 95 that, you know, it's not the same, right? It's a different variation. This one's got the rocket firing Boba Fett or the early kit bash Boba Fett, whatever you want to call it on there. Uh, that one sold for thirty five hundred. This one sold for fifteen thousand. So th this is obviously an AFA ninety five one of two versus one of ten, but it also has kind of the early. This is most likely an early prototype example. You can tell if you look at it. You can tell that this has got an early prototype FET on the cover there. That rocket is significantly higher. It's got an alternate paint scheme. This is you know a prototype FET that's on the store display. So very very cool there. 
Um, so that's why that one sold so much, plus the grade and, and the lower pop for it, but very cool. This was a cool item. This These were all first shot pre-production prototypes for the Cantina creatures, including uh, the Blue Snag. So first shot Walrus Man AFA 75, first shot Snaggletooth Blue AFA 80, first shot Greedo AFA 70, and a first shot Hammerhead AFA 85, and it include the Kenner card from the employee where th these originated, 11875 So uh, just an amazing item there. We had another Vinyl Cape Jawa that sold. This one did not have any standing to the Cape AFA 80 Plus for 18750 18750 That's kind of right in line with expectations, in my opinion. Kind of, I was thinking in that 18 to 20 range, so maybe 16 to 20 range. They had an archival case, AFA 80, uh, 80 Plus, excuse me. But that, that was a beauty, and uh, I think that was a very fair price. It wasn't like an, an underbid or an overbid. I think that was kind of right in line with market, in my opinion. Uh, here was a proof card for the 31-back Luke Farm Boy. Very tough to find some of these early ESB card backs, proof cards. You can see the kind of uh, condition of it. It was only a 70 because of the wear or the fadedness to it, but... Uh, just an awesome item there that sold for four thousand dollars. I think that's probably a pretty good buy, although it's you know it's a lower grade, so you're taking a little bit of risk there um, on that. But four thousand uh, dollars seems very fair to me. Uh, vacuum form retail display of the Yoda. We've seen some of these over the years, either on Hakes or elsewhere. This was an AFA eighty five population four, second highest graded. That one sold for forty five hundred dollars. Again, there's been a, one or two of these that have sold recently on Hakes. I did not pull it up to compare it to see how that compared, but uh, just an interesting sale there. This I thought was a very cool item, and I think it was worth every penny of this $4,500 sales price. This was a baggy, unpainted, white limbs, brown torso for Luke Hoth Battle Gear. So a bagged, first shot, bag, you know, ESBD baggy. How cool is that? And... AFA 80 plus it sold for 4500. I've seen the first shot prototype unpainted Luke Hoth not in the baggy sell for this price or more. So to get the baggy version, I thought that was a great deal. Great deal at $4500. That's a price I would have paid in a heartbeat if I had the money. Very very cool item. Uh we had a 47 back free forlom offer for Boba Fett AFA 85. This was Population 7 in the highest grade, so there's six others in this grade. This obviously was a punched example with a price ticker that sold at $6,000. Um, that's, I mean, in my opinion, I think that was maybe a little high, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I think we saw one recently that was an AFA 85 for this that sold in that 4500 range, but I could be wrong on that. Um, I, I didn't look it up on Hakes. I feel like there was one on Hakes that just sold in that price point, but... 6000 for that one. Uh, we had a Millennium Falcon AFA 80 that sold for $52.50. Uh, I, I do think that the market for mint and sealed box Millennium Falcons is really strong right now. It, the, the prices have held up very well uh, in that four to 5000 range, if not above that now. I think if you have one of these and you're sick of, of storing it, now's a pretty good time to sell this, uh, either on Hakes or... Heritage or wherever you you know whatever your preferred auction house is, but if you're thinking about selling it and you have some money in it, you you have a pretty good you know baseline purchase cost for it. I think these Falcons, whether they're the ESB or the or the Return of the Jedi versions, if they're mint in sealed box and high grade AFA graded examples, now's as good a time as any, in my opinion, to sell those. Next up, this was a great item. This was the, the Sakuda sealed with the coin inside. And so this has the General Lando coin inside, and it's shrink-wrapped. And these were made by the Sukuda factory in Japan. I've seen a few of these over the years. And it sold for $10,000. This is Population 1. Uh, but it's a weird item. Uh, you know, the Japanese Sukuda factory vacuum-sealed these with coins. And this one has a General Lando coin on a Skiff Guard disguised Lando. Uh, just a really kind of wonky item that uh, I've seen over the I've seen a few of them over the years, even on eBay. Uh, but that one's the highest graded one on the population report and sold for ten thousand uh, dollars. Next up, we all right now we got to talk about the tri logo General Maydeen. 
This was the highest graded example, Population 1 AFA85, and it sold for $37,500. And whoever bought this is going to do very well, in my opinion, on this. Uh, AFA85, and it's the only one out there. Uh, this is a easily the most rare of the Trilogos. Double stem blister. And then you compare it to the one that just sold March 20th of this year. That was an AFA 60 yellowed blister. That one sold for 42242 Versus this one that's a clear blister, AFA 85, highest graded, population one. And you got it for less. You got it for less. So whoever bought this, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, maybe it'll go down as this is, is an overpay too. I don't think so though. I think that long-term, this is going to be a very good investment, very good investment. And whoever bought this one has got to be like, gulp. Uh, I mean, wow, just, just wow. I, it, that's a massive pullback on a significantly higher graded item, exact same item, but, but population one, the highest graded and it sold for, you know, five or seven, you know, five to $6,000, $7,000 less than what this one sold for. So that is just crazy. And hats off to Hakes there. Because they did, whoever owned this one did really well to sell it when they did. Because they got into a bidding war. And you just never know when those bidding wars are going to happen. And it's very clear that the upper end of the market, there was a massive pullback. You know, they just, they have their assets or their 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 fund money in other assets right now. And I, I you know, again, I've, I've told you my theory on it. Whether I'm wrong or not, I don't know. But uh, it just seems like this time of year, people were either... Uh, they, they had their assets tied up in something else at the end of the year here. So uh, here was a Chromalin proof card for Luke Skywalker on a Revenge of that. So it's not a, a Revenge of the Jedi proof card. This is the Revenge of the Jedi Chromalin. This is an even earlier pre-production prototype item. That sold for $20,000. Very, very cool item, though. That's, that's, a, that's a beauty. Uh, next up, all right, now we had the original packaging artwork. And I, you know, the, the comment on, in the Facebook groups was that this one was a steal. Ross Barr mentioned that he thought this one was a steal, given that you're getting the original art. This is the original art used on the Power of the Force card, on the Return of the Jedi card, on the Trilogo card. And, you know, it's, it's an incredible item and it included the CIB photo art medium. So the, uh, this art originated from the Kenner let me pull this up a little bit so I can see it better. Originated from the Kenner Art Morgue and was re was rescued by a former Kenner employee prior to its marked destruction date in the early 1990s. Image was used on almost all carded Nikto action figures released worldwide. So, item has not been sealed into an acrylic display with a unique serial number. Therefore, we cannot verify that the actual item which accompanies this COA at any given time is the actual item which has been reviewed. If you would like to discuss identifying markings and flaws, please have the original submitter contact. So, you know, there's a little bit of risk on that, that, you know, this thing gets faked. But, I mean, give me a break. It sold for $25,000. That's that's an incredible item. I think, you, you know, whoever bought this is probably going to frame it and include the seat, you know, the, the statement of archival in a frame. But wow, uh, very cool. Now you compare it to what the Leia Organa Bespin sold. That one sold for $156,000, $156,000. So, uh, so somebody saved these two. They were, these were going to be trashed by Kinner uh, in the 1990s and some smart person saved them. And you know, you got you got two hundred thousand or one hundred seventy five thousand dollars of of Kenner history here in just those two art, you know, card art, original art. So that how insane is that? We had another one of those unreleased Chief Chirpa first shot prototypes. So these were the Ewoks line unreleased figure. We've seen a few of these even sell on eBay. That one sold for thirty five hundred dollars. There was one on eBay that I think I think that sold in the two thousands. I don't remember the number. It was like twenty five, twenty eight hundred dollars. So. Uh, that's up a little bit, but it seems to be a pretty consistent sales range. And then finally, here was the original packaging art for the droids Boba Fett. How cool is that? So uh, that one sold for ninety three thousand seven fifty. So original art is up for comic books. It's up obviously for action figures. That that market is alive and well. Um, 
So those kind, those items, those three items really bucked the trend. The Nikto, the Princess Leia, and then obviously the droids, Boba Fett, original card art. Those, those did really well, especially the Boba Fett and Leia. But uh, it seems like to me we've had a little bit of a pullback on these Grail-type rocket, And I think maybe, too, there's been so many of them lately, right? There's been a, a plethora. A, you don't even know what plethora means. There's been a number of them that have sold. Uh, over the, the last year or so, people are cashing out that have bought these a while ago. And this this will probably, if I had to guess, this item that just sold at 275, in my opinion, this will probably put the brakes on that on this market uh, for, for a while uh, just because of the big drop. And now if this one had sold closer to what this one had sold for at 525, we'd probably see a few more of them. But my guess is that we'll see a halt, a a pause on the sale of rocket firing FETs because clearly the market says, Hey, there's only three or four or five or 10 people that want these right now. And if you don't get a bidding war going, the prices drop precipitously. It's, it's a, it's a Russian roulette type of type of thing when you list these for sale, right? Uh, in an auction. So, uh, I, I do think that people that are holding these types of items are, are going to maybe pause and, and, and wait to see how the you know economy does, how, some you know if 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 cryptocurrency goes nuts and bitcoin goes to $200,000 and people double up their money and cash out their bitcoin holdings and have a lot of free play money fake money that they just earned by sitting in crypto this market could take off next year again but i i think for now i bet we'll see kind of a pause on this stuff so that's my thoughts on it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, as always, for watching. Again, don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll be back soon.